men. This is the exact opposite. For so long, medicine has been trying to zoom in, going down to the cell level, proteins, single genes. Now we're trying to zoom out? Exactly, Maya. This is a relatively new scientific discipline in medicine. It's called systems biology. The approach is to study the interrelations between components of a system. These components could be anything, genes, protein, uh, regulatory elements, and thousands of them and millions of them. Seeing the whole picture as opposed to looking at the individual jigsaw puzzle pieces, it makes sense to have a combined approach. Actually, considering the complexity of biological symptoms, you would think that concentrating on one component of the system would probably not give you the whole picture. Do you agree? In order to explain this analysis, one needs to understand the scientific context. The big picture here is network-based analysis. We are talking about, first, building a network where its nodes are those players, genes, diseases, proteins, regulatory elements, uh, whatever. And the edges are the interrelationships between them. Considering the current molecular techniques that are being used, these networks would be enormous. Absolutely. And therefore, this is why at the second stage, we run sophisticated algorithms in order to detect uh, interesting patterns out of those networks. These are the kind of patterns that only with computers, and probably only with this kind of methodology, we can really achieve. How can computers make sense of such huge networks? Let me explain with an analogy from the digital revolution. The kinds of algorithms intelligence agencies use in order to detect terrorists and uncover their plans before they launch them. Modern agencies collect tons of intelligence data. This could be visual intelligence data from cameras, um, signal intelligence data from communication devices, human intelligence from spies, even medical data and financial data. When terrorists make their best effort to disguise their deeds, intelligence agencies need to collect all this kind of data and study the interrelationship among many, many kinds of pieces of information and using these algorithms make sense out of the mess. Can you give an example? Do you know how the US found Osama bin Laden? In 2007, after analyzing huge networks of phone calls, of videos, of money transactions, they were able to find the name of one of Osama bin Laden's couriers. Interpreting this jungle of data made them speculate that that courier um, actually helped terrorists by recruiting them and supporting them. It took additional three years to collect more data and to analyze it in order to connect that specific courier to a specific location. That location was a compound highly secured in Abbottabad. This is a town about 35 miles north to Islamabad. They noticed that this compound was highly secured and they fused it with additional information sources from other intelligence agencies and they concluded that that was the residence of Osama bin Laden. A similar approach would be very useful in biological settings. Massive data collection that would enable to characterize normal functioning and to spot deviations from this normal functioning, such as would occur potentially in a process of malignant transformation or loss of tolerance that leads to autoimmunity. Exactly. Looking at the system rather than at its individual components, one can identify critical points that would make more sense to target. Clearly, not all system components would have the same weight in terms of impacting the whole system. You should know where to interfere to achieve a targeted goal without creating havoc. Yanai Ofan. Yanai can give a fantastic explanation on systems biology and the relevant applications in medicine. Yes, he will. Okay, and I will see you for another Spotlight session next week.